The first moment you put on a Quest 3, you realize it has a lot of shock value from the clarity of the screens, the higher resolution, the nice new lenses. And then as you put it on further, you spend more time in it, you realize some of the bad stuff as that wears off from the bad battery life to the microphone on it sounding terrible. There's a lot to talk about. Meta sent out a bunch of Quest 3s, creators in their program, people that weren't in their program, a bunch of people have gotten these in the last week to review ahead of time. Keep in mind as you're kind of sifting through these different videos, trying to get more and more details. As far as I know, outside of developers, no creator got theirs more than four days ago. So a lot of people didn't have a lot of time to review it. So we're not gonna call this a full review. We're gonna go into a deep dive about a lot of the features and questions that you've had. It's gonna take a couple more weeks or even a month before we can give you a full review on it. One more thing to remember is this is pre-launch. So if there's launch updates that happen the day this comes out, there may be some things that get better quickly. So so some of the qualms that we have or issues that we're having may be something that was part of pre-launch. Keep that in mind. So when you first get a Quest 3, you pick it up. The thing feels a lot more solid than a Quest 2. Everything about it feels nice and stable. These arms have a lot of movement and they actually move a little easier than the Quest 2. Those ones were so hard to move that some people didn't even know you could move them. A big deal to me is that the USB port on the side, now that it's not down here, it's not on an angle, it's solid. The strap actually kind of leads into it and it's this little bit of plastic. Doesn't feel like you're gonna scratch it as bad. Feels like it's a lot easier to put this in and out and it feels pretty solid. It doesn't feel like you're going to snap this thing like it always felt like on the Quest 2. The only thing that's not real solid on the whole thing when you're feeling it is the interface. This new interface design that can be extended out away from it kind of makes the whole thing feel a bit more flimsy and doesn't feel real solid on it. But the reason that it does this now is that it can accommodate a whole bunch of glasses. The sides of the facial interface can actually pull out quite a ways, give you a good little buffer of distance here. And for all the glasses wearers out there, I brought a bunch of glasses to check really quick. These were my glasses for years before I got LASIK because I was so sick of VR and glasses and contacts, all that nonsense. I will say on the fully out setting, it's a surprisingly good feel. There's actually still finger space in between my glasses, lenses, and lenses. So I could get a little closer, but I don't want to risk scratching those. Glass on glass can scratch. Around the side here, I mean, you look, you can see my glasses are going in here, but since this part is padded, it's not really pushing in horribly bad. It's actually not a bad fit at all. Just for perspective out there, these glasses are just a wee bit over five inches wide. I brought a bunch of other pairs here, but really, I think the biggest glasses I own are these Ray-Ban creepy spy cam glasses. Oh boy. Oh boy. It fits, but not comfortably. I feel those pushing real hard on my face right now. Oh, and the sides are definitely too wide. Let me make sure I got this on the farthest out setting here. Oh, I keep shoving it back in a setting because I'm pushing so hard on it. Wow. Oh, oh man, I'm even like popping off the interface here with these glasses. Okay, if your glasses are about six inches wide and thick frames, wide frames, I'm gonna say that new interface, probably not gonna work for about six inches wide. But even something that looks more like traditional Ray-Bans, albeit a much cheaper copy, a little bit better of a fit. So there is a limit to what kind of glasses are gonna fit okay with this. It's important to know for glasses wearers out there, but you have another option. They are offering the lenses just like previous Quest 3s that can go inside. I'm not exactly sure how they're going to attach because if you look at this, unlike the Quest Pro, there's not a real big lip for this to hook around. There's kind of a sharp edge here. I don't know if maybe they pop inside of there, but Meta has their own options they partnered up with. And then of course, other aftermarket third party ones have said they're already working on them. If your glasses are wider than six inches or you've had problems in the past, you probably wanna go aftermarket lenses. I will say Reloptics has been one of the ones that I've tried that have been really good and they're pretty reasonably priced. Okay, so I've beat to death this whole head strap thing. So I'm just gonna touch on it real quick. The stock head strap is made a little bit better than the Quest 2. It feels a lot better though, because the center of gravity on the Quest 3 is so close to your face that now with this on, it's not nearly as uncomfortable. I still wouldn't keep it. I still would replace it, but I think there's going to be a big group of people out there who get used to using it and just stick with the stock head strap. The one thing about that I will say that makes it worse is if you're switching from person to person to person and everyone's readjusting the strap, it messes it up. But if you are the only one and you spend three hours playing and you get it just right, it can be okay and kind of comfortable. And last of the questions out there, everybody said the headset, they're saying 40% thinner optical stack, but how thin is that actually when we talk facial interfaces on there? So forehead off the desk, we're looking at just about three inches exactly, a little under two and a half. It is significantly thinner, but definitely no 40% when you figure in the facial interfaces on its maximum setting, but let's try on its thinnest. Two and a quarter inches, that's 
a significant percent smaller. So with all that, you've got your lenses potentially in if you need them. If not, you got your IPD slider. We talked about this a little before, but basically we're seeing it goes all the way down to the number 59. Although keep in mind, this does get really tight in your rear bridge of your nose. So for some people who have a smaller IPD, they still might not be able to get it all the way down to 59. And then you can take it all the way out to 71. Knob gets a little harder to turn near the end, but that does make a much wider nose bridge spot there. Hopefully for anybody who's got that wide IPD. And then it's into setup. The new room setup feels really nice off the bat. You put it on, it starts scanning the room around you and you're like, oh, this is making my life so much easier. It's got that depth sensor in there. The depth sensor does take a little bit longer. It's not a super fast scan. You have to kind of look and you have to see where it's seeing where the walls are. For people who have a nice big open living room with a huge open rug, the setup is going to be awesome, fast. It's going to just map the whole thing out and they're going to get in the game. The problem is for most of us who have a little less space or they have something in the space, whether that's the edge of a desk, a chair, it may map the play space much smaller than what we want it to, the space we're actually going to utilize. But once you hit continue, it does let you quickly kind of push those edges out and gives you the ability to make that space a little bit bigger. I've found so far it's about 50-50 for me. About 50% of the time I'll let it map the space and I'll push out. Sometimes I just make the boundary myself because I'm used to that from the Quest 2. It's a little faster and it does seem easier. It's not going to feel completely revolutionary and nice to everyone who does this. Some people may just resort back to the old way because it is a little faster. I do like though that it seems like once I set it, it did a better job of keeping it. I mean, with my Quest 2, I could put it down, put it back on, and I ended up having to remount my play space. This seemed to do a pretty good job of keeping it over time. It's supposed to be able to store several rooms at once, although I found every time I left from one room to another, I did have to remap it. And in those initial videos, it looked like it was going to recognize open air spaces. So if like there was a desk or a couch or something, it would recognize that as furniture and auto map it. Maybe that's coming after release because so far it just seems to tell me, no, this area is not usable play space. Hoping to see that change. But then whether you're in the past or you're in game, you get in and you're looking through those lenses and that is the biggest change for this headset the lens clarity the fact that their pancake lenses mean they're nice and smooth lenses you don't see all those little concentric rings you're used to seeing on the quest 2 the screens with a higher resolution look great barely any screen door effect you have to look for it now god rays are pretty much gone because they don't have those little rings for all the light to glare off of there's a few little other things you might notice there's a little bit of chromatic aberration around text where you see like a little bit of red and blue smearing around the pixel but for the most part the screen clarity is going to be the night and day change from the Quest 2. Brightness, we haven't seen an exact nits number on it yet, but it seems pretty close to the Quest 2, maybe a tiny bit brighter. The clarity is great. Still doesn't have a super vibrant difference between darks and lights. Like it's still a little bit smeary in some scenes, but for the most part, the clarity that it's added now is enough that you don't really care about all of that. And something about the lenses, I don't know if there's a coating or what it is. They're pretty good at not fogging. They do fog up on occasion if you're in a really humid area or if you're sweating in a game, you put up in your forehead, you pull it back down, all that steam has been rising. But even then, I've never had these fog to the point where I can't see what I'm doing. And I'm pretty used to that in the Quest 2. It also feels like there's some sort of channel of air. I don't think there's necessarily a fan meant for the inside, but all of these fans that are pushing all this heat may be creating a little extra airflow. It's where the fog isn't as much of a problem, but when it comes time, someone makes a fan that will blow air through this facial interface, I will probably opt for that. Here's something I'm worried about. It's going to take a little bit of a history lesson to get you to what I'm thinking. When the Quest Pro came out, they noticed that there was multiple manufacturers when people started tearing them down. There was different displays and there was different levels of quality. I don't know if the Quest 3's done that, if they've had multiple people make the inner workings, but I've tried a bunch of them now between the demos, Connect, and here. And I do feel like some of the defects I've noticed have been a little different ranging from headset to headset. It seemed like the first one I had, the pass-through never had any graininess. The second one I had, it had that really bad ring of light that you notice in the Quest Pro. It's not a deal breaker but it's just this brown hazy edge. This one, I don't feel like it has that at all. And the second one I tried, I also thought I saw some Samira, which is this kind of smear that follows you over the lenses. With this one, I can't see it at all. So I'm wondering if we're gonna get these varying levels of quality that came out kind of like with the Quest Pro where some people got theirs and like, oh, it's so beautiful, so clear. And other people got theirs and they were like, oh, what is this that I'm seeing? Or what is this that I'm seeing on the screen? And they didn't like that. That can't be confirmed yet this early, but I am gonna be watching to see if we start getting reports like that. Especially once you have it home, you really start to see where the pasture is a little grainier, where it's dark. And maybe that's just because I'm in a home environment and not in those perfectly set up press demos I was trying it in. But let's talk about the pass-through. The pass-through isn't going to be another thing with the Quest 3. The moment you first see it, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so amazingly clear. It's so perfect. And then a few minutes in, you're going to start to notice the defects. If you are in an open room and everything's far away, the pass-through looks nice and clear, especially if it's really well lit. But if it starts to get dim, 
or if you're in an area, you bring your hand up, you start looking at closer objects, suddenly you're gonna start to see those little edges where the different cameras are melding together. There's a wee bit of distortion in those edges or where it's darker, there's a little bit of that graininess going on. I don't know how they did it in New York with those demos, but it seemed like there was just none of that. I think it was the lighting was just right. And if you're in a room with really bright lighting, it looks really good. If you're in a normal room, it still looks great in comparison to the Quest 2. But as you spend more time in it, you're gonna start to see where it falls short. Something that's new about the pass-through feature is your home environment's typically always pass-through, which is cool because you can always see what's going on. You're not stuck in that virtual home. You feel like you're not cut off from what's happening in the world. But sometimes you'll start a game and you won't realize that at some point you've accidentally double tapped the headset and it's still in pass through and you'll hear the noise, the music of the game start happening and you're like, what's happening? And you have to do that double tap. Okay, we're in the play space. I never loved the double tap. I always wish they had just made a quick button to switch because with the double tap, you can even just be trying to adjust your headset on your face. You can grab it and move it and you can accidentally do that. And now that it's not a very clear from a virtual environment to a home environment, it can be a little harder to tell when you're in pass through. I noticed at one point when I was trying to start a game of Demio, the game audio was starting. I was still in pass through. I was like, what's going on until I finally double tapped and then it went into it. But talking about audio, audio is going to be the next big thing you're going to notice. The audio is so much louder, it's clearer, it's more bassy. If you're just judging the audio all by itself versus like nice headphones, it's a little muddy. It's still so much better than the Quest 2 that I don't really care that it's a little muddy. The directionality of it sounds better when there's something to your side, you can clearly tell. I think that a lot of people who got headphones or something for the Quest 2 won't bother with that in the Quest 3. These are just so much nicer now. I've been really happy with them. An interesting and weird detail though, because I had to know, I was like, well, what happens when you put headphones on? It seems like the auxiliary port might still be underpowered. Because when I put headphones on, even my nicer Sennheisers, I put them on, I had them all the way up and they still weren't very loud. And when I unplugged them, these were louder than my nice headphones were on my head. So people who do opt for headphones might find they need something battery powered and amplified because the power sound coming out of this, it just doesn't seem sufficient. That was kind of disappointing to me, but at least these are good enough now that I don't feel like I really need it. Something to think about, especially when that comes to privacy. Now, if you're wanting to play something, you don't want people around you to hear what you're doing, what you're watching. These things bleed. The audio, it, it may be aimed towards your ear, but it's going out everywhere. So if you're playing anything, expect the people around you can hear it. And if they don't want to hear it, you will have to find some sort of headphones that are going to work. And unfortunately, the Quest 2 ones, the port was on the other side. So we're kind of back to square one, starting fresh with these, unless you have just regular headphones. I did some mic checks to see how's the microphone. Did they use the one from the Quest Pro? Is it something better? So we mentioned before, from doing the demos and testing out. The overall the audio quality goes. sounds a little better, but it sounds like it's way too loud. It pops a lot when you're talking into it. It sounds like it catches the air. If things are a little further away, the audio quality is not good in that respect. And when I was playing multiplayer games in this, I got the robot mic. If you remember that, it was an issue on the Rift S. Suddenly the mic would go all robotic and it would sound really wrong when you're in the middle of talking. And this seemed to have that issue already. Hopefully things can be patched, but I am worried about the multiplayer gaming experience experience with the mic on this. And of course, unfortunately with that, your only settings I could find so far in the menus are turn the mic off or on. I couldn't find one to turn down the volume and see if that helped. Audio is much better on board. Mic, sadly, still not a lot better. Something that is way better, shockingly, the controllers. This is going to be one area where you first put them on, you get into a game and you might drop them down to get your headset adjusted. You're going to notice it takes a second. The controllers show up right away, but it needs to track them. It needs to see them fully and your hands. So at first, you might see them kind of drifting off or wandering away in Beat Saber. I kept seeing my Saber try to run. But then once I got them up and got going in game, I could not believe how well these tracked. They seem to track better than Quest 2 controllers. Not quite as good as Quest Pro, but they do their own tracking. They track really well. But the only times I could really get them to mess up is if I put it completely behind my back and held it there for a while and waited, or if I reached way up, but then fought the temptation to look up because then that would attract it. If I reached way up, then I could see my arm starting to kind of jump around a little bit. Beat Saber, Expert Plus, these things worked really well. I was completely shocked. I did a test where I played a song on the Quest 2 and then I played it on the Quest 3. And then I played a song on the Quest 3 and then played it on the Quest 2 because I didn't want to be getting practice one or the other. I did several songs in a row. Scores came out pretty much the same. I was able to full combo every song on Expert that I tried. And then when I got to Expert Plus, I was a little rusty, but every time I missed something, it felt like it was because I could see I was missing it as it was coming. It didn't seem like these messed up in tracking at all. I was blown away by that because I was really not expecting that. This new hand and controller tracking, somehow what they've done is working really well. There's also a little bit of a phenomenon to keep in mind here with something like Beat Saber. The 
processing power, the fact that the frame rate isn't dipping, even when I was recording, it makes it feel like the tracking is better because everything is just so snappy and smooth. That also makes you feel like, wow, this is running even better. And for Beat Saber, something that I actually appreciate because I've been used to playing on the Quest Pro controls, which are heavier. These are lighter. They're a little easier to toss around, faster move. But even though they're lighter, they still feel really durable. Like they don't feel like they're gonna break easily. I'm not worried if I drop them, if I clang them into each other, well, or if I just wrap them together. Like I'm really not worried about these controllers, which makes me happy. And in hand, they feel like the Quest 2 controllers or like the Quest Pro controllers, so much so that I'm actually curious how close these are to the Quest Pros. Obviously you're not gonna use Quest Pro grips. This is just for science. <laughs> just as I thought. These are these are almost an identical match. Now, you can't use these because they're gonna cover up all of your tracking lights, but that's how close they are. This is made for the Quest 2. Look at that, it even looks better. Still functions, no big tracking ring sticking up. If you're used to Quest 2 controllers or Quest Pro controllers, these are gonna feel identical in hand almost. They just don't have the big tracking ring. Now, you're not gonna use Quest Pro grips, but there are some grips already coming out that won't be blocking the tracking lights on here. But when you put the controllers down, it's very quick to switch to your hand tracking, which I like. It doesn't take all that time like it did on the Quest 2. It switches almost instantly, you're in your hands, and in the menus now, you can tap with your finger. And there's a weird phenomenon, both Nat and John tried the headset and they said the same thing. When you're tapping, even though there's no haptics, obviously it's your hand, it almost feels like you're touching something. So what happens is when you reach in and you touch, it kind of stops your hand just for a moment, your virtual hand, even though your real hand is still moving, and it kind of makes this bit of disconnect where it kind of feels like you're actually touching a menu and moving through it. It's almost like a bit of phantom touch. It's really weird, but it just makes it feel so natural to swipe through the menus with your actual finger and touch the buttons that I really like that. And I feel like I didn't miss the whole idea of like, oh, but if we had eye tracking, we could look and then tap like the Apple Pro. It was just like, move and touch. Felt really natural. Obviously your hands don't have haptics, but the controller haptics also are the Quest Pro style haptics. They're more precise. They feel nice. They don't always feel stronger depending on the game, but I really like the new haptics. They feel solid. Somehow though, with my death grip when I'm playing games, I did still get the battery door to pop open on me a few times. It has this button, so technically it shouldn't happen, but somehow still I'd be in game and I'd be playing and all of a sudden I noticed my battery door was loose, which kind of took me back to some bad Quest 2 memories. I don't know if I somehow squeezed it with some part of my hand or what happened but these are not foolproof i will say and with that the batteries in the controller so far i've used this for multiple hours i've only lost like two percent so i think the batteries in the controller is going to last a long time and that brings us to the battery life in the headset you might notice a good old friend is already back on here for us taking care of me until I can get a new head strap. I have not been able to get a full two hours out of this thing. I played a mixed reality multiplayer game. I got an hour and 41 minutes. Nope, here I go. Battery has died. Wow, one hour and 41 minutes in. And I thought, okay, maybe that was because of what was happening, what was going on. I've switched VR, single player, played a game, an hour and 58 minutes. Ever since then, multiple times I've ran through this thing, I don't get a full two hours. So when they said, oh, it's similar to the Quest 2, I mean, I don't know. And that was default settings. I wasn't recording. I didn't turn up the brightness. All default settings. So if you're a content creator and you're recording the whole time, I'm really worried about how long this battery is going to last for you. We'll have more testing in the final review of that, but it seems like the the battery because of this better audio, because of these better screens, the resolution, it is draining more, even if they potentially put a bigger battery in there, I wouldn't guarantee you're gonna get more than two hours. And they even say for gaming, it's 2.2 hours, which is what, two hours and 12 minutes. I never hit that. Most likely whoever wants to play for a long time, you're gonna need some sort of battery strap. There's options coming. We'll talk about those more in another video. But for now, good old Bobo VR saving the day. A lot of people in the comments have said they only really care about this for the VR capability, but mixed reality is what Meta's really pushing. And I will say, until you've tried it, until you've played through it, I don't know if you see the value in it, but I really appreciate that it goes into the pass-through, at least when I'm getting ready, I'm grabbing the controllers. It's just so easy to do everything with the headset still on. I'm never pulling it up, I'm never taking it off. Even to look at my phone, respond to a text, check something on my computer, I just use the pass-through. When you get into the mixed reality in games, there's basically two types of games we're seeing so far. One is like Synth Riders. It makes a portal in front of you into the virtual world. You still see your surroundings around it, but really it's the same game. It's just a portal that's now throwing blocks at you. It's kind of like Beat Saber. If you just saw into the world of Beat Saber instead of being inside of it and the blocks were to come out of it. The other games are like the Stranger Things, the Ghostbusters, where it brings things into your world and you're dodging, you're fighting, you're shooting back in your own 
own world, which is really cool. I like those potential games, but a lot of them feel small. They feel tech demo-y. They're still new, and we definitely just aren't there yet. It hasn't been out long enough to get big, real mixed reality games. I'm a little worried that we're going to feel kind of like we did in the beginning of VR, where a lot of those are just going to feel like these short tech demos, and it's going to be a while before someone really figures out what makes a good MR game and how to make an MR game people really want to play. Unfortunately, because this review is coming out before a lot of the games that are actually MR games that you can play game modes, I can't show those yet because the launch date hasn't arrived, so we're going to do our best here with trailers and all our stuff to still give you an idea, but we'll have more of those coming out after release. But for games, overall so far the headset feels like it's made honestly for vr gaming the fps is nice and smooth with this better processor the controller tracking is really good the field of view you notice it when you're going from a quest 2 to this and especially when i'm switching back and forth to compare stuff the field of view is not only wider it's a little bit taller but what is nice about it is even though it's still not human vision we're still short of that it just kind of feels like a big open field of view instead of kind of feeling like two circles like binoculars like the quest 2 always felt for me your mileage will vary if you are using glasses or pushing the facial interface out further because the closer you can get that to your face the better that field of view is going to be even where i noticed on the lowest setting if i push the headset in a little further i can see a little more so i'm kind of hoping some aftermarket facial interfaces will get us just a little closer to those lenses for that extra field of view and a lot of games are getting optimized for the quest 3 they're going to use the extra power they're going to look better but even the games that don't have it they look better because of this increased resolution the nicer panels. Things just look good in this headset. It's a big change from the Quest 2. We'll touch on a few games. We'll just make it quick. I played a lot of Beat Saber in this because I really wanted to test the tracking. I wanted to see how it felt. I really liked Beat Saber in this. More than anything, the audio was just so much more immersive. It was so much better. The tracking was actually better than the Quest 2 because the one area on the Quest 2 that sometimes gives you trouble, I felt like it was when you're having to swipe notes side to side. Because of the way these cameras are positioned, you have all that coverage. And even when you're swinging up and down, it didn't seem to lose tracking at all. And the fact that it was just so much smoother. I got into Gorilla Tag because a lot of you in the comments were asking about Gorilla Tag. It of course still looks like Gorilla Tag because it's not the most high-end textures, but it is clear. You can see every texture, you can see in the distance further, and the tracking didn't falter in Gorilla Tag. Even when I was reaching up trying to wall climb, I don't have the skills to do all of the things that the really good Gorilla Tag players do, but I never found the tracking to be an issue. The only time one of the other players helped me out watching when I put my hand way, way up and I just shook it like this. After a while of me not looking up, finally the hand would start to do this jittering, but not a problem at all. We talked a lot in the previous video, Red Matter 2 obviously being one of the biggest examples where you can see the graphical difference right now, and it is incredible how good this can look without the foveated rendering the Quest Pro had. Like, it just looks great. Of course, had to try a little bit of PC gaming on there. I tried Air Link, which actually ran better on this headset than I've ever gotten it to run on Quest 2. Still a little jittery. It wasn't perfect, but it was better than I've gotten the Quest 2 to work. Then once I wired it up to the Oculus own meta headset cable, got in some Half-Life Alex, looked around in there, there. Problem was on Air Link and Half-Life Alex, for some reason it wouldn't load the textures, but when I got in with the link cable, it looked good. The problem was the last headset I tried it on was the Varia Arrow and it looked amazing in there, but it still looked really good in here. You do have that problem that we've always had of the Quest 3, the battery continues to drain while you're running a link cable. There's potential link cables that you can plug them in also that are supposed to stop that problem, but I'm going to need more time to check those out and see if they work. But when you hook this thing up to the PC, if you've been doing it with the Quest 2, it's going to feel exactly the same. The way you do it, the way the operating system works, everything about it feels the same. Same, but obviously you're getting the better resolution, the headset's thinner, a little more comfortable, a little closer, and once we replace this head strap, hopefully a lot more comfortable. And speaking of that, accessories are coming. Meta's got their own ones. I haven't gotten any of those ones yet to test out third-party ones. We talked about the Bobo VR, how they're making a conversion kit that swaps out this piece so you can take your existing M2 strap, swap it onto your 3. I really like that idea to save the money on it. We talked about how some Quest 2 accessories are going to work, and we saw in testing the gun stock that I have worked just fine, even though it does potentially cover up that extra infrared light that's back here. You don't really need that with the gun stock. It's tracking these in your hands, and it worked great for that. But the golf club, this is the walkabout mini golf club, and although, yes, the controller fits, it works, the second you put it down and all of these tracking lights are no longer facing it, it can't see this one, it starts to lose track. It started drifting around and jumping around, and it was very obvious for Walkabout Mini Golf now, I'm going to have to stick to these controllers in my hand or I'm going to have to use the Pro Controllers. The Pro Controllers are another accessory. $300 for perfect tracking. These are good enough. I don't think you need that. I'm shocked to say it. But for Beat Saber, Expert Plus, 
These were good enough that I was like, I don't really need the pro, but for something like 11 table tennis, if you wanna try and use a racket or for something like golf, if you wanna use a club, it may be the only option for now. Weirdly, now that the cameras don't show infrared through the headset anymore, you can't look through it like it's night vision goggles, but you can still use infrared light to play. A lot of you in the comments were asking about multimedia. I got Netflix, YouTube VR, still the same old apps as before. You still see the Quest One controllers in your hands. The problem with most of these is that it's more about buffering and quality than how good the headset actually looks. So until we start seeing some actual good 4K, 8K VR surround videos, it's hard to judge if any of this looks any better, but Netflix definitely still looked good. I feel like it looked about as good as it did on the Quest 2 though. So overall for me, Quest 3, Meta did send this one out, but I'm actually buying myself another one and I have absolutely no regrets about doing that. It is such a leap from Quest 2, the thinness, the pancake lenses, everything about that feels revolutionary. The only things that are killing me are the battery life on the headset. You're just gonna need a battery strap Honestly, in my opinion, you have to have one. And the microphone on it is not great, but we've been dealing with that kind of on every quest, so it's not really a surprise. I just really wish they would have nailed that with a great microphone because multiplayer VR gaming is what it's all about. Having a bad mic sucks. Although remember, like I said, this is pre-release and even the Quest 2 itself when it came out years ago, a lot of updates have come out, a lot has changed, and the headset can do a lot more than it could back then. But we've dove into a lot in the few days that we've had it. I've got a lot more to come, so let me know. Comment any questions you have down below that you want to see. We'll try and get through as many of those we can for the final reviews or we'll do more of the Q&A series that you've all really seemed to love to help answer those as quick as we can get back to you then. I'm really happy to have the Quest 3. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be using my Quest Pro much anymore and that says a lot for it. So for those of you out there who are still on the fence, I don't think you'll regret getting it if you're coming from a Quest 2. It's a huge step up and if you do want to get it and support the channel, I bet there's a link down below if you want to get it through us. There's one on Meta, there's one on Amazon. A percentage of that does come to help the channel, but you've all been doing so much to help the channel. We've grown so much the last year and even in just the last two weeks with all this is happening. So thank you once again. I appreciate all of you so much for coming out and being with me and I will see you in another reality.